Hi, Andrew Aversa here with Impact Soundworks, and today I'm going to be walking you through a short piece written by Youssef Musavi. Because TV and film composers often have to dynamically shift between different styles, textures, and emotional tones within a single cue, it's convenient to have individual instruments and libraries that can keep up with those changes. To that end, we've chosen to highlight six of our products that are especially versatile and that really shine under the demands of modern TV and film scoring. Let's do a quick rundown of the six instruments Youssef chose to use for this cue. The green tracks are Vocalisa, a powerful Bulgarian-style women's choir. In blue, we have Javanese Gamelan, a traditional Indonesian percussion ensemble. In purple, we have Modern Harpeggi, a 24-string bass and guitar-style instrument that's almost played like a piano. In purple, there's our flagship Shredge 3 Hydra, a deeply sampled 8-string electric guitar. In pink, we have Momentum, a percussive sound design collection with lots of loops and rhythms. And finally, in orange, we have the newest addition as of this video to the Impact Soundworks family of instruments, Tokyo Scoring Strings. This is an incredibly detailed and articulate string library that perfectly captures the Japanese orchestral sound commonly heard in video game and anime soundtracks. The cue starts with the Javanese gamelan and some light cello underneath. The gamelan has one core articulation which makes it easy and intuitive to play. Looking at the UI, Yusuf's using the full group patch with default settings and the Slentham group disabled to take out some of the boomy low end. He's added a stereo modeler in the console section just to open up the instrument a bit. Vocalisa Ensemble soon comes in with the mezzo-soprano section performing some staccato da's. There are a handful of patches that come with Vocalisa. Full group, sopranos, mezzos, altos, and a soloist. Each section has variations such as effects and staccatos. Switching between articulations in different syllables is easily accomplished using key switches. In the second half of the intro, three separate Vocalisa patches are layered, two of which do a sustained A. On the top, we have the full group, under that is the mezzo section doubling them, just to bring out more of that specific timbre. And at the end of the intro, we have a second full group performing a yeek in combination with the other two. By looking at just one of these MIDI tracks in more detail, we can see how easy it is to control Vocalisa. At the bottom of the page, we see Yusef has maxed the mod wheel in the second half of the intro to maximize the dynamics. Staccatos are controlled using velocity, and the various key switches for articulations and syllables span a single octave. Yeah. 
Going further down the line, we have Hydra and Harpeggi, both of which start out by matching the gamelan as they lead us into the second half of the intro. We'll look at the modern Harpeggi when we get to the verse, so for now, let's talk about Hydra. While Hydra is an 8-string guitar with a design that lends itself well to heavier styles of music like rock and metal, it is fundamentally a guitar with tons of articulations and functionality that work for any genre. Here, Yusef is using it with a clean, plucky, and chorus tone, which blends well with the Harbegian drums. Definitely doesn't sound very metal yet, but it doesn't have to. You can use it however you'd like. Hydra then switches gear on the second half of our intro, and really shows us its strengths. This track here plays huge power chords, both sustained and palm muted, in the very low registers of the guitar, giving us that massive high gain sound with loads of sustain. On top of the rhythm track is a lead track, which starts off with a double stop guitar bend that slowly bends itself out of tune, ending in a pick slide. Let's look at the MIDI data for that track. Typically, note bends are performed with the pitch bend lane or pitch wheel, but since this is a double stop bend, meaning two notes are being played simultaneously, you can use CC3. That's the default CC to control the unison bend knob, which can be found here on the UI. This function bends the lowest note of any two notes, and it works very well in Shreddage 3. It functions very similarly to regular pitch bends in Shreddage in that you can control how many semitones the max value will bend the note. In addition to the bend, there's also some vibrato added just to provide a bit more wiggle and realism. This lead line ends with a pick slide, which can be found under the effects articulation that defaults to the G-1 key switch. Now let's look at Tokyo scoring strings. This composition already has bass, so our string section consists only of cello, viola, and violins 1 and 2. One of the main goals with TSS and its design is to be both detailed and quick to use at the same time. For example, all of the different instruments use the same key switches in the same registers. And secondly, while you're free to use any combination of the mics that it was recorded with, in this track, Yusuf is using the board mix created by the famous engineer Mitsunori Aizawa. If you're a fan of the Japanese sound, this considerably decreases the amount of time you have to spend mixing. Finally, we have the look ahead mode feature of Tokyo Scoring Strings, which in combination with our delay compensation plugin, perfectly times all the articulations and MIDI data so you don't have to nudge notes and move them around off the grid. This feature alone is a game changer. Let's look at the MIDI data for the viola. It starts with the same arpeggios that the gamelan is doing, and then ends with a few notes of sustained tremolo. The sustain, or arco articulation, is here on C-2, and tremolo is on B-2. If we look at the mod wheel lane, which controls dynamics, we have a simple ramp up all the way to fortissimo as we hit the tremolo. Vibrato is controlled by CC2 by default. Similar to the mod wheel, our arpeggios and walk up have no vibrato, giving us that more flat sound, and then we have a quick ramp up to full vibrato when we hit the tremolo section. Let's look at the A section next, starting with Modern Harpeggi. It's being used in three completely different ways in this track. First, as a bass, both clean and distorted. And if you were to hear this without any context, you'd probably have thought it was a standard electric bass. Regular basses in Harpeggi's bass strings share some similar fundamental characteristics, but Yusef went with the Harpeggi here because of its unique timbre and almost chorus-like sound. Moving to our MIDI, the Harpeggi is doing a combination of long and short notes and ending with a fast 16th note run. The longer notes are taking advantage of Harpeggi's vibrato functionality, controlled with the mod wheel. Yusef is not using it sparingly here, which might sound a bit much when soloed, but actually it helps stand out in the mix. The run at the end is a great example of just how nimble and clean this instrument can perform, even on really fast passages. There's also two individual Javanese gamelan patches being used. The first is the Dimung, a tuned metallophone with a rounded attack and a beautiful sustain. And the second is a gambang, a wooden instrument reminiscent of a xylophone, which is paired with delay. Let's hear how those sound together.
Lastly, leading us out of this section, TSS matches that base run and very cleanly. The run is performed using the Spiccato Seiko articulation because of the extra crisp attack it provides. Yusef also automated the reverb to come in and out at specific sections. For this section, it's turned off to prevent the reverb from blurring the fast notes. The B section is rhythmically the most complicated section of the song. There's a lot going on, but we'll focus on a few performances of note. First, the clean hydra patch, which is putting in some work. Starting off with the previous run from the end of the A section, quite a bit is happening to sculpt the sound. Here on C-1 is the sustain articulation. Beneath that, Yusef is telling Hydra exactly which strings to play using the force string key switches, so that Hydra performs the MIDI in the same neck position and frets that he would on a real guitar. Scrolling all the way to the top, we also see there are up and down pick stroke key switches, again to make this as timbrely realistic as possible. None of this is absolutely necessary, as Shredage is designed to intelligently choose these things for you, but you have the ability to make these choices if you want. Following the run, the guitar plays a combination of arpeggiated and strum power chords, with a variety of sustain and palm mute articulations. Now let's take our first look at Momentum in action. Momentum was designed to be used in many different ways. It has a powerful looping and effects engine that gives you lots of creative sound design possibilities, but as is the case for this song, you can use it as a simple player with individual patches and performances. This track here was made using the Washer Brushes patch. The second track underneath it is a Water Glass patch that has ring mod and delay added to it, giving it a very ethereal sound. The patch also comes with a pretty wide stereo field, which Yusef took advantage of. Let's take a listen. The C section starts with a new harpeggi track playing arpeggios in the upper register. This is actually the instrument's default patch, but it's been mixed to sound beautiful and spacey. First, using Archetype Nolly by Neural DSP. Most notably, it's passing through a stereo ping pong delay with the mod knob maxed and a very nice reverb. All of this is being made wider, further delayed, and more detuned by Soundtoy's MicroShift plugin. Here's what that sounds like. These two Hydra tracks here are going through a very similar set of effects. The idea for both of them was to channel a bit of that ambient post-rock sound, again, still just using Shredded Street Hydra and nothing else. One track is playing harmonics, and the other one is a bit more interesting, so let's check out its MIDI. We can see it's playing arpeggios, but what's very cool is that it actually sustains them. Shredded 3 instruments can do this by using a combination of the sustain articulation with the sustain pedal down. It works especially well if you tell Shredage which strings you want it to play. Let's hear how these two tracks sound together. The cue finishes off with a pretty heavy ending that, among other things, combines the energy of some cinematic style percussion with the complex textures of Vocalisa and the power of Hydra. First, the percussion. Aside from the drum kit, there's two layers here giving us a huge boom. The first is a bass drum for momentum. The drum already sounds huge, but to give it some extra oomph, Yusef is using some extra transient attack, tube saturation, and reverb in the mix. Layered atop that is actually an instance of Vocalisa. The effects patches here have a foot stomp that's quite loose, and when added to the bass drum, it gives it a bit more complexity and weight. Finally, let's talk about what's happening here in the vocals, as it's the most prominent aspect of the ending. We have two patches. The first is the mezzo-soprano, which sings the bulk of the ending. Layered underneath that is the soloist patch. 
For the most part, they're all singing a variation on the A articulation, which starts off a whole tone below the target note and then bends up to that note. It's a recorded performance, not using the pitch wheel, so it sounds incredible, especially with complicated chord voicings. In terms of mixing, there's a few things going on, both internal and external to our instruments. Vocalisa's natural EQ curve already sounds great, so all that Yusuf has added is a reverb send of Relab Development's LX480 Reverb. This is based on the Lexicon 480L, which is one of the most expensive reverbs ever, and here it's being used in plate mode, which sounds great for vocals. The three Javanese gamelan patches have some low cut being added, with the exception of the gambang, which doesn't need it. Inside all of their UIs, there's some extra stereo spread. And on the main patch, Yusef is using East-West's Spaces Convolution Reverb to bring out just a bit more stereo information and space. The previously mentioned delay on the Gambang is Valhalla Supermassive's Make Everything Better preset with the width maxed out. That arpeggiated and spacey harpeggi, in addition to being processed with Nolly and Microshift, also has Kush Audio's Omega A saturation plugin as the first stop in the chain. This is a 70s style API preamp emulation which adds some extra harmonics and clarity. The Harpeggi bass is also going through the Omega A. Afterwards, it's going through Wave's venerable Renaissance bass plugin for better audibility in the mix, followed by Get Good Drums Smash and Grab, which while technically a drum compressor is kind of like a make anything sound better plugin. After that, some of the low-end resonance is being cleaned up by Soothe 2. Almost every instance of Hydra is using Archetype Nolly, obviously because of its impeccable quality with modern high-gain tones, plus the Smash and Grab compressor to bring them out in the mix more. All the guitar patches are then being cut to leave room for the bass. For percussion, we mentioned before that the bass drum for Momentum is being sent to three plugins. The first is Native Instruments Transient Master, which adds more attack. The second is the Supercharger GT for extra weight in the tube saturation. Momentum's washer brushes are basically untouched, except for some low cut and a stereo spreader, and the Vocalisa Stomp track is being treated exactly like the other Vocalisa tracks. And like I mentioned before, aside from a bit of LX480 reverb, nothing was done to the strings. And there you have it. With this composition, you have an idea of the tones and textures at your disposal with these diverse instruments and also some inspiration on how to mix them. Of course, we're always excited to hear what kind of music you'll make with our products. If you're looking for more inspiration, be sure to listen to the demo players for each of these libraries and check out their full video tutorials. This has been Andrew Aversa from Impact Soundworks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.